May is coming very fast, and that means a slew of new games. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the top 10 new games of May 2020. Starting off at number 10, it's Someday You'll Return. I think it's probably best just to say right up front, the developers have said multiple times that it draws inspiration from Silent Hill, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, Resident Evil 7, and Outlast 2. Now altogether, those are some pretty varied titles, so it's important to maybe note a little bit of the story too. Basically, you play as a guy whose daughter has run away before. However, this time she's run away to a forest that you swore you would never return to due to some traumatizing events that happened there when you were a kid. Needless to say, you're going back. That's the point. Someday you'll return. But it's important to note just how cool this game looks. It's really got a unique look to it. Like in some ways it has a little bit of a Bioshock quality to it, while at the same time reminding me of the forest. I think a lot of different people will see a lot of different things in this game, but supposedly the monsters aren't the scary ones. Someday You'll Return is hitting on May 5th on PS4, Xbox One, and Microsoft Windows. Moving on to number nine, Population Zero is an absolutely gorgeous new MMO survival game where there are 168 hours left until human extinction. Now, the reason I think that the premise just on its own is automatically great because survival games are usually meant to go in perpetuity. However, not so much here. The goal is obviously to survive as long as you can in most survival games, and here you only have 168 hours. It's got PvE, it's got PvP, and did I mention it's gorgeous? Like, if you're looking at the footage, you know exactly what I mean. This is a beautiful game. It's got such a good grasp of color that it reminds you of some of the things they promised No Man's Sky to be and then made it over the following two years after its release. It's beautiful. It's in early access too, so we know that they're not pulling a No Man's Sky. We know what the game is at this point. However, the full version of Population Zero is hitting Microsoft Windows on May 5th. Coming in at number eight is the Wonderful 101 Remastered. Now the Wonderful 101 came out back in 2013 for the Wii U. It is actually a phenomenal game. It's a platinum game directed by Hideki Kamiya. You essentially control a horde of various different superheroes that all do different things, and you unite them into different types of objects to defeat enemies with. Now this game is absurd in exactly the best ways. It is not really a standard platinum game, but damn, is it fun as hell. And I I'm stoked to see it out on consoles that are not the Wii U, because it's a game that should have got a lot more attention, but the words Wii U are exactly why it didn't. As far as plot goes, it's not really that complex. It's just some aliens attacking some kids on a school bus at the start, and it evolves from there. It's very silly, it's beyond fun. The Wonderful 101 Remake is out on PC, PS4, and Switch on May 19th. Number seven is Those Who Remain, a psychological thriller, a game where you, Edward, have a good life, a good family, and yet you have a secret affair in a scary little town called Dormant. I'm sure it's called that for a reason too. It sounds a little bit too much like Dormant, and the town is apparently on some sort of weird dimensional rift where the fabric of reality is in question. A, you travel between two dimensions, the quote-unquote real one and a scary one. You have to manipulate light sources to keep yourself in the light, otherwise you are going to get into trouble. And let's just go ahead and say something. This is, for the scale of game it is, absolutely gorgeous. The art direction in this thing is just amazing looking. It evokes a lot of 80s stuff, but a little bit more grim. The colors are a little bit muted, but not super muted. There's a lot of colored light being played around with, but it's not so blatant as a lot of colored light is nowadays. And there's a lot of scary sights to see. Those Who Remain is coming to PS4, PC, and Xbox One May 15th. It will also be coming to Nintendo Switch sometime during the summer. We will keep you updated on that. It's very exciting looking though. At number six is The Elder Scrolls Online Greymore, which is a new chapter, obviously which is actually set in Skyrim a thousand years before the Elder Scrolls Skyrim. 
Now, it's obviously not the full Skyrim map. It is Western Skyrim. Essentially, what you're tasked with doing in this DLC is stopping a vampire lord. It is a continuation of the Harrowstorm story, and the story it's telling will continue to be told throughout the entire year. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and say this. Like, The Elder Scrolls Online is a way better looking game. It's, for the most part, a better working game than most Bethesda games. They made an engine specifically for it that does what it's supposed to do. I think we all know my gripes with Bethesda using their same engine over and over again. I don't need to retread them. I'm looking forward to exploring Skyrim in The Elder Scrolls Online, and I will be doing so when it hits on May 18th. At number five is Ninjala, which is, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, a game I'm really excited about. I really didn't hear about it until fairly recently, and it gives off these serious Splatoon vibes. But I'm gonna go ahead and say something else. If you combined Splatoon with an old game you may or may not remember from the 1990s on the Super Nintendo, which was called Gomon in Japan and Legend of the Mystical Ninja here in the US. It is, of course, a multiplayer game like Splatoon where you're competing against other players to win the match. You get katanas, you get hammers, you get yo-yos. That's what reminded me of Mystical Ninja, as well as the music. The music is just like powerfully Legend of the Mystical Ninja-esque. This looks like one of the most fun games, and if it turns out to be as fun as it looks, I am gonna be lost in, in competing in this game. Ninjala is hitting May 27th. You can download a demo now. It is tons of fun, and I cannot wait to play the full game. At number four is before we leave, a city builder on a hexagonal grid where you rebuild civilization. You emerge from the ground without the knowledge to grow anything but potatoes because potatoes grow under the ground. You do so much more over the course of this, of course. You even leave the planet. I, of course, have not played it yet. It's not out. It does look very cool. It purports itself to be able to build multi-planet resource networks that may or may not be under attack from hungry space whales that you have to fend off. It claims non-violently, although I'd be very interested to see exactly what it means by non-violence. It is very cool looking, though. You're on a big sphere with hex grids. You build cities. You deal with stuff. And personally, it's something I'm very interested in. In some ways, it does remind me of Civilization, although, again, it purports itself to be non-violent. Before We Leave comes to PC on May 8th. I'm very interested. It looks like a pretty fresh take on this type of game. At number three is Saints Row the Third Remastered, which I'm going to go ahead and say, very excited. Saints Row 3 is probably the best one. It's probably the one that manages to do what Saints Row sets out to do the best without getting into territory that sort of undoes the self-aware nature of it. It's good GTA satire, and considering GTA is itself satire, there's really a sweet spot to find, and they found it. Now, what they've also done for this remake is redone all of the car models, all of the gun models, all of the atmospheric effects. Basically, it looks way better. Does it look like a brand new game? No, of course it doesn't. It's a decade old game. It's from 2011. But all those new lighting effects, the volumetric everything, it all looks really nice. I will be playing Saints Row 3 Remastered, of course. It is coming to us on PC, PS4, and Xbox One on May 22nd. At number two is Minecraft Dungeons, a brand new dungeon crawler built in Unreal Engine with the aesthetic of Minecraft. Keeping in mind, this is not a mining or crafting game. It is a dungeon crawler, period. It's just set in the world of Minecraft. Now that of course means they have to take some liberties. Those liberties to me look as though they fit with what they're trying to do. However, there is no class system. You essentially start from scratch and build your character in the same way you might consider building a world in the Minecraft. Personally, I think this is actually a pretty good looking game. I love the lighting. They've really gone for a good look with it. It obviously does look like Minecraft. However, it doesn't have the same sort of stale lighting of Minecraft. And let's just go ahead and say Minecraft RTX is sort of ruined that look for me in some respects. 
So I'm quite thankful for the fact that it looks the way it looks instead of like vanilla Minecraft. Minecraft Dungeons hits PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch on May 26th. And finally, at number one is Man Eater. Man Eater is basically Shark Simulator. It's not a real shark simulator. Like if you're looking for something that accurately models how sharks are, this is not it. It's more along the lines of Tony Hawk's Pro Shark. I know they don't want it. The developers cite a much wider list of influences, but let's just be clear, that's obviously there. It does try to incorporate sort of open world elements, and in some respects it calls its combat system inspired by both Punch-Out and Dark Souls. It is an absurd looking game. They're certainly pushing some boundaries as far as what is reality and what isn't. Maneater is hitting PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. On May 22nd, there is also a Switch version coming, but we don't know release date information. That's all for today. Uh, what do you think about these games? Leave us a comment, let us know. I know I'm at least trying all of these games this upcoming month. Hopefully they all turn out to be as good as they look. I'm particularly excited about Ninjala and the Saints Row remake, and probably Maneater. I just really want to actually play Maneater. It's been something that's been on my radar for a while. Leave us a comment though on your thoughts, and if you enjoyed this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. The best way to see them first is of course a subscription, so click subscribe and don't forget to enable all notifications. As always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.